This video is a bit of a request really. A number of people have asked how I'm getting on with the EP Ever Tracer and uh, do I agree with what I said in my original review? Well, in the last nine months I've used it through summer, autumn and winter and I think that's enough to be telling you what I like about this charge controller and the few niggling things that perhaps could be improved. And the one I get the most comments about on that review is the uh, battery indicator here, the state of charge meter. As you can see here, it's showing two segments out of a total of five. Um, so we can suggest it's about 40% full, my battery bank, or at least that's what the EP Ever Tracer says. However, as you can see, uh, my battery bank is at 12.9 volts, and there's a a few watts coming out of those batteries as well and I'm pretty pleased with that I'd say 12.9 volts after the Sun's gone down is pretty well charged but of course this meter is showing it is much less than fully charged and uh, to be honest if you buy one of these that is going to be a niggling annoyance this only shows as fully charged when the battery is at the float voltage or above so unless this is actively being charged, the meter shows it is not a full battery. And in fact, now, while I've been doing this video, you can see it's gone up to three out of five segments, and there's certainly no solar coming in uh, at this time of night. But that isn't a big problem for me, to be honest. I don't really take any uh, notice of this state of charge meter. I just keep an eye on the battery voltage. The other things of note about this screen is, of course, it does take a while for all this information to go round on the carousel, and it's not backlit. So if that's a problem, well, you could always buy the MT50 meter, uh, which is backlit, as you can see there, in a nice blue, and it does show the majority of the information on the screen all at the same time. Uh, but of course, that backlight does go off to uh, save your battery. But actually, I don't use the MT50 very much. I occasionally plug it in when I'm in the shed just to check a few bits of information. However, usually my Tracer A series is connected to my computer, and uh, I do that via the Ebox Wi Fi 01 uh, Wi Fi dongle, um, so I can do that over the air rather than using a physical cable. And the EP Ever Solar Station Monitor software allows you to get an awful lot of information out of this solar charge controller. And in fact, you can archive some of that information. And that's great if you're a stats geek like me, because you can get these graphs straight out of the software and uh, save them as images. Or you can get the uh, comma separated values, the CSV file out, and put them into Excel or a Google spreadsheet, something like that. But one of the strengths of the uh, Tracer, the fact that you can get all that information out of it, also points out another one of its weaknesses. This is the power graph um, from about 8 o'clock in the morning to just before 4pm on an awful winter's day. As you can see here, we didn't even at this peak get 4 watts from 200 watts of monocrystalline solar panel. In fact, I'd say the average throughout the day was slightly less than 2 watts. Terrible. But that in itself isn't necessarily an issue with the Tracer A series. That's more of an issue of the weather on that day, my solar panels, their angle towards the sun, etc, etc. But these graphs do show that even at that peak, the uh, Tracer A was only able to... Uh, deliver 250 milliamps of current into my batteries. And that is partly because of the voltage that my panels were held at. And you can see here, this blue line here is actually the load voltage, but that's of course exactly the same as the battery voltage. And this is the red line is the panel voltage. And you can see that the panels are only just a little bit higher in voltage than the battery. Well, that's not MPPT. In fact, this controller on this day was acting more like a PWM solar charge controller, 
and uh, it was a PWM solar charge controller trying to get as much as it possibly could out of those panels because the panels were pretty much directly connected to the batteries throughout the whole day. So that led me to further investigation. Now around here we'd say that this day was half decent, it wasn't that bad. And uh, this was another winter's day, but we obviously got some sun. We got up to uh, 60 watts there, peak, early in the morning, uh, which dropped away as the batteries charged, and uh, what, averaged 25, 30 watts uh, for much of the rest of the day. And that's plenty to get my batteries uh, filled and topped up. But uh, if we look at the current curve here, we can see it clearly was doing MPPT. The uh, green battery line there is showing that there was four amps at that peak going into the battery, and the array voltage in red is showing, uh, well, just one and a half, 1.75 amps, something like that. So clearly it is doing the correct conversion for MPPT. However, when we look at the voltage graph, we can still see this period at the beginning of the day where the panel voltage is only just a little bit higher than the battery voltage. At this point, it's still doing pretty much PWM. And this is one of the biggest complaints I get from commenters about this particular charge controller, that it's slow to track. But if we compare the voltage graph here at the top with the power graph here at the bottom, we can see what's going on. When the uh, solar charge controller detected 10 watts, a little bit more perhaps, it suddenly went into MPPT mode. And when it dropped below 10 watts, it dropped off doing MPPT. Now there'll be lots of people saying, well that's a really poor MPPT charge controller, and I think that's a valid point. However, you have to ask yourself the question, how efficient would the DC to DC conversion be at just 10 watts? Perhaps this is designed specifically because anything less than 10 watts, uh, you're going to lose most of that power in the DC to DC conversion, and until you've got 20, 30, 40 watts, it's really not worth doing. On that, I guess I'll let you decide. So in conclusion, I think the EP Ever Tracer A series is great value for money. Yes, there are a few annoying things with the state of charge meter, the speed of this carousel, because inevitably, if you try and find the bit of information you're after, you go past it. And once you start buying the optional extras, there's loads of other information you can get out of these things. You can even build your own cables for less than a pound or a dollar, and uh, using the freely available free EP Ever Solar Station Manager software, you can get all the information out that you want. Enough information to prove that it does have a couple of issues. But for me, that's all part of the fun. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.